So yeah, a while back, Andrew Yang was on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, and I just finally finished checking it out, and we're gonna discuss the man himself, presidential candidate, Andrew Yang. What is up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community or pop culture, or just in the world, and try to see what lessons we can learn from them. And something I'm really passionate about is mental health, as well as addiction recovery. So if you're into any of that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And while you're at it, make sure you're following me on social media over on Twitter and Instagram at The Rewired Soul. All right, so yeah, this podcast episode was from about six months ago. I know Andrew Yang has some newer appearances and you know, the next round of debates is coming up very soon. But anyways, like I've been following Andrew Yang for a while and I like the things that he has to say, but I've wanted to learn more. So anyways, real quick too, this is the second video in a row that I've done like, I watch this so you don't have to. Here's the thing, I don't know, I, I kinda wanna do this more often because I know a lot of people don't like reading books, a lot of people don't like long form content. I know a lot of people do like those things. But, like, if I can condense those things and discuss some points that I think are important that you should know about, I might do that. So if you like that, let me know down in the comments below. All right, I'm long-winded, but I try to shorten what the original content was. Because yeah, Andrew Yang on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast was about two hours or so. Um, so anyways, like, let's talk about Andrew Yang. And then I'm gonna kind of talk about my opinions and predictions. But anyways, here's what I dig about Andrew Yang. Like this dude is trying to get to the root of the problem. So as somebody who is trying to help people with their mental health, and I've you know, had to work on my own mental health, I overcame my own opioid addiction seven years ago, my alcoholism, uh, depression, anxiety, and all those things, like something I realized, which is very important for anything, for anything, is getting down to the root of the problem, all right? The way I think about it and the way I see a lot of people operating is they're hacking away at the tree branches and they're like, why isn't this tree gone? Because you didn't get down to the roots, baby, all right? And what I appreciate about Andrew Yang, like I made a video about this a while ago and it was titled something along the lines of like, Andrew Yang is the only you know, candidate who cares about mental health and people are like, whoa, 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 he's not the only one. But he realizes that that is the, the root of the issue, right? So in the podcast, like Joe Rogan talks to him about like what inspired you to run for president, right? And I respect his answer. Like he was looking around, he saw all these problems, he saw people are miserable and things like that. People are miserable, angry, all sorts of stuff. And he's a problem solver. He's like, what can we do to solve this problem? And he just starts looking at different angles to take and it's like, okay, well, let's start here. And something that he's running on is universal basic income or the freedom dividend, which is $1,000 a month. But it's not just like top level, like, oh, give everybody $1,000. He understands the root of the problem. Like, I want you to sit here and be honest with yourself. All right, think about your biggest stresses in life. Think about how many arguments you've had in your household and think about how many of those were related to your financial situation, right? Like working all day at a job that you don't like, coming home stressed because of money issues, right? You're at a job all day that you don't like and you're stressed about money. Like that's a double whammy. Or maybe you're unemployed and things like that. Like something Andrew Yang talks a lot about is automation. And he wants people to get into more creative careers, things that cannot be replaced by machines, right? But he mentioned something that was just so on point too, where he talks about how when people's mental health improves, they're less, <laughs> they're less racist, they're less misogynist, right? Like they're less angry. And it's like, yes, you guys, that is true. When you look at all the anger in the world and people just like, oh, you know, they're, they're, they're taking this away from us and they're taking this away from us and all these other things. And that is one of the reasons why divisive politics works so well. 
When candidates are able to tell you that those people are to blame, it's easy and they get to play into your anger, which is really rooted in fear, right? How am I gonna support my family? How am I gonna support myself? How am I gonna put food on the table? How am I gonna keep a roof over my head? All these things, and we start looking for people to blame. So once, like what Andrew Yang is constantly saying is like taking the, the boot off of people's neck, like people are gonna be able to breathe a little bit. And like if we can get most of the country just a little bit happier, like think about it. Like think about that right now. Like a lot of you have seen me do videos recently on like outrage culture and cancel culture. And something that I keep coming back to is why is everybody so angry, right? And there's a million reasons for it. There are so many reasons for it, right? There are people who either, you know, they believe they're being oppressed or they legitimately are being oppressed, but that oppression leads to them not having as many opportunities. And the reason why it is putting them in this angered state is because with a lack of opportunities means their financial standpoint in life isn't all that great, right? Fear turns into anger, and then you have people just screaming at each other online. Like, part of outrage culture online is because people have their own stuff in their life that they're dealing with that they have little to no control over, so they're spewing their anger out all over the internet. So when Andrew Yang talks about how this is going to improve mental health, I'm like, yes, 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 yes. And if you want to check out the whole podcast on the Joe Rogan experience, I'm gonna link it down below because he goes really in depth on like mental health studies, suicide rates, opioid addiction and everything. Like the part where he talked in this podcast about the opioid crisis and how like doctors um, and even big pharma are you know, they're incentivized to make money. Um, like doctors, they try to peddle these pain pills to you, right? Even if you don't really need them, like so many things that are an issue. He also had a good answer for talking about free college, which um, I thought was interesting because I love me some Bernie Sanders. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But he was talking about how, you know, if you get the freedom dividend, like if you wanna use that for college, cool. But, and I do believe this to be true, is that we keep selling people on the idea that college is the only way, but he talks about how 44% of college graduates, you know, they, they either don't find a job or they find a job, you know, that they're overqualified for. You see what I mean? Like they're not getting something that they pursued a career in. Now, personally, my opinion on that, a lot of people major in really dumb things in college, and that's half the issue right there. But anyways, like I, I was starting to realize how, how well-rounded Andrew Yang is, but it always comes back to the root issue where people are depressed, people are angry, people are miserable. Like this is why people are turning to drugs and alcohol. This is why people are turning to suicide because of that misery. So can't we work on making people a little bit happier? happier? Because what he talks about is getting rid of the GDP, right? Gauging our nation's success on money. Because this is something I try to teach people on a personal level too. Do not gauge like your success on how much money you make or the things that you buy. Because we know, most of us know by this stage in our life, I don't even know how old you are, but you've probably figured out by now that money does not make you happy. Now, money does decrease stress. But what Andrew Yang is talking about is not measuring the country's overall success on how much money we're making, but how happy are people? It's like, yeah, like you guys, like what, what is the point of anything if we're not striving to just be a little bit happier, right? If I ask you right now, separate, two separate things, right? Would you have, rather have infinite money or infinite happiness, right? Like logically you choose happiness, right? Like if I could figure out a way to be happy with zero dollars, I would take that any day of the week. All right, because we've seen, and this is something I talk about all the time, like every celebrity death is another example that money cannot guarantee your happiness. It can just decrease your stress, all right? So anyways, the last thing I wanna talk about is I'm a huge, huge fan of Bernie Sanders. And I've mentioned this before, I think it'd be awesome if it was, you know, Bernie and then VP Andrew Yang. And maybe I'll do a whole separate video on this if you want me to, like kind of comparing the two, let me know down in the comments below. 
but I just feel like Bernie has more experience, right? But it sounds like Andrew Yang knows what he's talking about. But I also think one thing that Bernie Sanders has going for him is, is that kind of passion and emotion, right? And like, like, I don't think Bernie plays into fear the way some politicians do, such as like Donald Trump and things like that. But Bernie Sanders can play into people's emotions and get people like excited and riled up, you know? And Andrew Yang is just like a chill dude. So I don't know, I just foresee Bernie doing a little bit better. But I do wanna make videos talking about this stuff to get awareness out there and something I really need to do, maybe it'll be my next book. Like after sitting down listening to two hours of Andrew Yang, I really want to read his book. Um, but I'm gonna check out some more podcasts. I know Bernie Sanders was recently on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast and everything like that. Um, so I'm gonna check that out too. Maybe I'll do a breakdown of that. Um, but yeah, before I forget too, one thing that I just really like about Andrew Yang too is he, he doesn't talk he doesn't talk extensively about foreign policy stuff, all right? He wants to help the United States get better. And he's not saying shut out the rest of the world or anything like that. And he has some great, you know, um, talking points when it comes to immigration and all of that kind of stuff. But you guys, like, the way I see it is, is this. It's, it's kind of like the oxygen mask analogy right? Like you put yours on before you help anybody else. And the reality is like our country right now with the amount of people struggling with depression, you know, the amount of people struggling with anxiety, the amount of people turning to drugs as a form of self-medication, the amount of people who are, you know, committing suicide and all that. Like we have a lot of work to do here, making people happier. And then we can go save the rest of the world. But right now, right now it's kind of like you being pretty broke, pretty poor, and trying to financially support somebody else. So we start here and then we expand outwards and help others, you know what I mean? Uh, but anyways, let me know your thoughts on that down below. Uh, and if you want me to do more videos about this or just like different candidates and kind of condensing, you know, their long form content, sharing my opinions, and opening up the conversation, just let me know down in the comments below, baby. All right, but don't forget, follow me on social media at The Rewired Soul over on Instagram and Twitter. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel in other ways, like buying my merch, buying the books I've written and all that kind of stuff. And if you want to check that out, just go to my website, TheRewiredSoul.com. All right, but anyways, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.